and welcome to this tutorial on Canvas discussions. So like many learning management system tools that are out there, Canvas has a discussion board or discussion forum tool, but it does have a few more bells and whistles than our former learning management system. The nice thing about Canvas discussions is that there's lots of ways to filter through the student responses, so it's a little bit easier to keep track of things. You can also set up your Canvas discussions to where they can be graded, and you can attach a rubric and use the Canvas Speed Grader along with it, so giving some feedback on it's a little bit more efficient than other tools that are out there. So I'm gonna walk you through how you can build a discussion and then also show you what one can look like as students start to respond and you can filter through those different responses. So first thing we'll need to do is go to a Canvas course. And if I'm an elementary teacher, if I click the manage subject button on my top left corner, then I can see more of these options and menus, but I will go to discussions. The other way, because there's basically multiple ways to do anything in Canvas, that I could start to make a discussion in Canvas is also going to a module and making one from there. So if I wanted to make a discussion, I'll just click the plus discussions button, and now it's going to take me into an editing view. So I can give this a title. And what's nice is that this discussion can really act as an all-in-one lesson tool if I wanted it to, which would be really nice for e-learning days if you wanted to have some students doing some interaction with each other. There's been a lot of research that shows that when students have the opportunity to converse with each other in virtual settings, the engagement's a lot higher and you'll get better participation. So I have lots of different media that I can put in here. Like if I have students who want to watch a video or I want to give them that option, I can use the rich content editor or the RCE here to add text, links, pictures, embed my Google files, YouTube videos, whatever I would like to do. All right, so hopefully you can with a little bit more discussion worthy prompt than that, but I can type that out. I can assign this to specific groups if I would like, uh, like my different class periods. If I'm a secondary teacher, I can attach files. And then here are some of the options that you have. So a thread replies allow students to respond back to each other. One of the features here that I like is that you can check this box here to where users must post before seeing replies. So what this does is that as you open up this discussion board and students start to complete it, if I have not typed my initial post or my initial response, I can't see what other people have written. So it kind of can reduce a little bit of that echo chamber where students are pretty much saying the same thing over and over again as their peers. You can add liking, you can add it to their to-do list so it pops up as an assignment. I always like to do that just so students know. Um, and the nice thing about that is if you add it to the student to-do, and it's, you also check the box for graded, then um, it will actually put that in there as a to-do list feature. But that allows me to put in who I'm assigning this to and when it's due. So it will pop up in the Canvas gradebook. And I could put that in my assignment groups. I can do points, all different kinds of pieces here. Um, so that's really, really helpful and super nice and kind of cool that you can do that. So as I go through and I do this, I'm going to make this do, let's say this Friday. Um, I want to make sure that's clicked there. Have responses, all of this type of stuff. And then I'll do save and publish. All right. Now, if I wanted to edit this a little bit further. All right. And I wanted this to be out of 10 points. I could also change this to different options. If I would like, I can save it. I can even do peer reviews. If I would like, I have additional options here where I can add in my rubric. So if I wanted, you can launch Speed Grader here, but if you don't add a rubric, it's not quite as amazing. Um, so I can add a rubric to this discussion so then students know what I'm looking for. And if you have specific things you want them to do, I would recommend that you add a rubric and you publish it. You can build it all from here. All right. So that as students go through and they start to do this discussion, they'll reply. And then I have opportunities here to collapse them. If I want to sort this a little bit, I can. I can search by author, all different types of opportunities and features here. And I can even send this to people if I would like. And because I set this up as graded, I can launch Speed Grader here or I can go to the Canvas gradebook and launch it there. 
So what I'm going to do is actually show you one that has some responses. So when we built uh, a course here for our summer blended learning book study, we use a lot of discussions as an option. And I organize them into a module, so it's super easy to do that. And then to pop into a discussion where we already have some responses. And I did set this one up to where they had to post before they could view others. Here's the questions, the responses, much like how when I made this discussion, I had options to add all kinds of media. The students also have that. So it doesn't have to be purely a text-based response. Um, I can add in all different kinds of links. I can add in media as a student. I can record audio and video. So if you want to give students flexibility, the discussion tool is great for that. So we see some really good discussion here. Um, and if I wanted to filter this by unread, if I wanted to show deleted replies, I can. I had that feature turned on to where they could. Um, I can sort through these different responses. If I would like, I can go to the topic. So his initial post, you have all different kinds of options here. I can even close it for comments too. So for this one, I didn't have a due date on it, but if I did, then it would close by that due date if I set it up that way. I can also even edit this person's response as well. So can easily go through and look at those and set it up however I need to. And whenever I need to go in and grade something that's been set up this way in SpeedGrader, if I launch SpeedGrader, then I can filter it by my class period. And if I click on a student, it will show all of their contributions, including their initial post, as well as their comments, on a thread. So pretty slick, pretty awesome, and it's a great tool for any day of the school year, but especially an 